and Jesus was told about the mother-in-law of Simon. He went in, grasped her by the hand, the fever left her, and she began to serve them. Today, the liturgy speaks to us about sickness and sometimes even misfortune in the life of a Christian. In the first reading, we have a very pessimist reading, but in a way, it's a sincere, because what Job experienced, and we now today read from his book, is the experience of each one of us, whether we like it or not, even if people ask us how we are doing and we answer fine, we are doing well, the truth is that there are days in our lives, and many of them are, that many times we find ourselves very lousy, like Jacob did. And the Lord wants us to reveal this to him. Not that he does not know us, because he is the one who created us, but he wants us to really plead with him and open our hearts to him and ask him for healing. And that is the contrast between the first reading and the gospel. Job, without the view of Jesus, his days were days of hardship. And he ends by saying that he will never see peace again. He will not see happiness again. On the contrary, in the gospel today, we find that through this very intervention, that Jesus was told that the mother-in-law of Peter was sick. Jesus reached out to her, grabbed her by the hand. He came, she came to her feet, the fever left her, and she began to serve them. And that is the call of each one of us. The calling that we have is the call of baptism. That from our sickness of the darkness of sin, we rise, and from that resurrection that we participate because of the passion and death of Christ, as St. Paul said, we die with Christ and rise to him to a newness of life, we are called now to serve. And look what beautiful it is. Not only Jesus knows about the sickness of the mother-in-law, but also she begins to serve them. I love the second reading today because the second reading is really what St. Paul is all about. If I have to boast, I boast in the gospel that I preach. And I preach it not because I took it on my own. It was imposed on me by the imposition of the hands of the apostles. When St. Paul, after he was baptized, and the hands of the apostle was imposed on him, the Holy Spirit really came down on him, and they and the Holy Spirit make a great effort and difference in his life. He preached the gospel because that was his entitlement. That was his call. That's why I am called to be an apostle, so that I, who are called from the fountain of baptism, I am called to descend to bring the good news. And that's why today St. Paul continue and say that the gospel entitled me with the repay. Remember what Jesus said, don't think what you are going to wear, don't think what you are going to eat, but don't think what you are going to dress. But anytime you go to a place, enter the house, eat what they present in front of you, and bestow your blessings upon them because the worker deserves his wages. St. Paul knows that. He knows that according to the teaching of the church, the canon law of the church, that every sacrament is attached to the stole. And the stole is that each one of us, when we receive a sacrament, we give a token, a stipend of appreciation. But we are not paying for the sacraments because we cannot pay for, for divine for divine intervention. But we are giving the priest as a token of appreciation of, ho of, of the time and also to be the one that connect us with the grace of God because he is the minister in the name of the Lord. 
So every sacrament is called a sacrament because it's a sign of God. And that's why St. Paul tells us today that I was entitled to that, to that recompense. But because I don't want to give ideas, and I don't want to be a scandal, and I don't want to be on the lips of people who does not like the gospel, that they say he is doing this because he is gaining from what he is doing, St. Paul reminds us today that he has put his head to the canvas, and by making tents, he earned his own living, so that he will be an example for them to understand. But although the gospel entails the repayment, he really did not look forward for that, so that he would not be a scandal to them. Because his idea, St. Paul, was that he preached the gospel without no attachment. Sometimes, you know, because of the favors that sometimes people do for you, or because of gifts of things that people give you, sometimes you are chained to say the truth of the gospel. Sometimes you close both eyes to the evil that sometimes you see among around you. And that is not the truth of the gospel. Jesus not, did not come from heaven because everything was okay. Jesus came from heaven to preach to us and to announce to us repentance. The change of ways, the change of life, that we need to change our ways in order to please the one that we are about to serve or we are serving. My dear people, when I look at that reading, it reminds me of the days some 34 years ago when Bishop Guilfoy raised his hands and put them on my head and when I stood up to take the peace from him, which is part of the ritual of the ordination, he turned to my ears and say, Carmel, be a good priest. Make me proud that you will receive this gift not in vain. And they still remain, remind me of those words. And many of those who are ordained by Bishop Gilfoy, they know what I am saying is the truth because I believe he said it to many people who he ordained. And you know that you are ordained by Bishop Guilfoy because I thought he was going to uh, make me uh, 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 put myself in the ground because he pushed his hand so hard on you to know that the really the, uh, the administrator of the sacrament took, took. And you know that that is what St. Paul reminded me of when he said the imposition of the hands that my gospel preaching to you was, I was really told to do, to do this. I did not ask for this. I did not invent this. As he said to the Galatians, today as we're reading the office, the morning office, he said to the Galatians, and he repeated twice, I am very ashamed of you, Gal Galicia, because you have turned away from the truth. And there is no other truth but one truth, the gospel I preach. And so he said to them, if someone who pretend to come from us, or even an angel came and talked to you another gospel, curse on him, and he repeated twice to make, under, to make them understood that this is what he meant. My dear people, when we look at the two readings today, I find three truths there. The first truth is that we need to be sincere with God. That even in this in the hardship of life, we can say to the Lord, Lord, I am fed up. Lord, is enough for me. Lord, when are you going to intervene? The Lord wants to know that we have enough, that we are humans and our limits, are ver our limitation is very, very short. The second, le the second lesson we learn is what are we doing for the sake of our community? Sometimes we look at the government who give them money because of social security or their job, they give them pension. Sometimes we look over government to give them medicine, but is that what the, what the sick people want and they will be satisfied? There is something more dear to them, and that is the presence of God in their lives. Sometimes, you know, when I 
look at many of those people in my time that I have ministered to, how many of them were people who were the founders of parishes, builders of, of places of worship, of places of education, and also re um, residents of pastors. They work so hard with the little they have to really build a community. And now that they are old or they are sick or they are bedridden, sometimes we forget them. It is the role of a pastor, together with those on the staff, especially deacons and Eucharistic ministers, that these sick people will be seen once a week with communion. And that is something that we take it very seriously, because that is the goal, or they look forward, that they will be comforted by the anointing of the Church and by the sacrament, the, the Eucharist, the true and center sacrament of the Church, that Jesus come to visit them even in their very hard times of their lives. And the third lesson we learn today is what Jesus did in the Gospel. When they told him, Master, where have you been? After he not only healed the mother-in-law and healed the whole town, of infirmity and possession of devil, he took off to pray. And what he said to them, he didn't say, oh, they like me, let's go back. Let's go to another town. My dear people, you are going to disagree with me and sometimes you don't understand me. But when you are accepted by a community, you are not doing a good job. Because he comes to his own and his own reject him. And if you want to be people who are really following the Lord, you have to be rejected. And rejected sometimes by those you minister. We are not here to make people feel good. We are here to make people realize that Jesus was sent by the Father for one important message. And that is that we will be really careful and examine ourselves constantly to change our ways if they are not according to the gospel because our goal is not on this life. Our goal is to be with him forever. With this in mind, the idea of sickness in the life of a Christian, the idea of healing, which is very important, especially with those who are, you know, people who need the true healing, which is the healing of Jesus, and for us, that whatever we do, we don't do it for people to applaud us, but we do it because we have a mission. And that mission is the mission of Christ. Go to the entire world. He didn't say go to the specific place and stay there. Go to the entire world. And why? Because the mission of Christ is still a long and actual and really a mission that's actually still going on in the world today. And the mission of Christ is that we show the mercy, the healing, and the love of the Eternal Father when we present the challenge of Jesus in the life of those we serve. God bless.